Sakura, Sharon, and Friends is a popular ongoing fanfic by Wish Love, and it's based off of Clam's card capture Sakura. And in each episode, we'll do a deep dive of a chapter. Let's get into it. So, uh, some news. Melanie is with me in Montreal. I'm here. So we get to we get to treat you with some more uh, in person podcast episodes. Not as ambitious as uh, when we were in Kansas, but uh, you'll be getting three episodes where we're together. So we're very excited to present this to you. Y'all, Montreal is absolutely beautiful. And then Priya took me up to Quebec City yesterday for my birthday, and. Yeah, if you guys ever get the chance, I cannot recommend it enough. It's absolutely beautiful here. <laughs> Question for you, Melanie. Tell us about your pets. <laughs> so current pet-wise, I have two dogs. I have a little pug named Archibald Lewis Hardy. He is called Archie, or Chi-Chi, by my four-year-old. He is my little princey. He gets carried everywhere. He's my little buddy, very much a Prince Syndrome dog love him to bits and then we have our big guy alexander butterscotch the great hardy <laughs> he, also known as alex he is our great pyrenees anatolian shepherd mix so he's a really big dog <laughs> he's huge but he's not really like a lap dog or super affectionate or anything like that but he is such a sweetheart and when priya came to visit me he was absolutely obsessed with her i kept saying that priya was his girlfriend because he loved her so much <laughs> Tell us about your pets. Okay, so my quote-unquote firstborn is my cat, Paul. He's nine years old. He's, uh, I always thought he was a black cat, but later I'll find, I would find out that he's actually a brown cat. But, um, yeah, it's for a long time it was just Paul and me. Paul was the only child. He liked it that way. <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> then when I met my boyfriend, uh, Nibbles came into the picture. So Nibbles was his cat. Nibbles is a two-year-old tuxedo cat, and his fur is black, black, black. Yes. So when you put Nibbles next to Paul, you realize, oh, Paul isn't brown after all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Nibbles is fearless. He grew up with a dog, so so nothing faces him out. Or as like Paul is, is he's an easy target for bullying. You can really <laughs> pick on him, and, and 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 he's just going to howl and 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 growl and hiss and 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 the whole uh, symphony of sounds. Yes. So the two cats get along for pretty much. Sometimes Nibbles will, will pick on Paul, but uh, you know they get into their cat fights. But uh, nothing compared to when Scruffles the dog came into this picture. So Scruffles is a German pointer dog, and he's about he's a bit over almost two years old. He's about a year and three quarters, and he's full of energy. And he, he's and I think Paul is his favorite because he just wants to like cover him with doggy <laughs> kisses, whereas Paul is not having it and hides and cowers whenever he's around. <laughs> But having a dog is completely different than having cats. Having a cat is like a roommate who just, you have to feed and clean up after them. But a dog constantly needs your attention and they're very clingy. This is Priya's first dog, right? You've yes. never owned a dog ever. No, no. This is my first dog and it is quite the experience. <laughs> <laughs> See, I grew up with both cats and dogs. Like I always usually had one or the other. But now my current spouse, he does not care for cats, but we have an agreement that if I were to get blessed by the cat distribution system, let's all put it out to the universe if this will happen to me, that if a cat chooses me and comes to me, then I can keep the cat. But I can't actively go out to like a humane center and adopt one or anything like that. So if y'all would want to put out something into the universe for a little black cat to find me, I would love it. <laughs> Today we'll be discussing Sharon's special, Small Wolf's Precious Birthday. Since it takes place before the Tokyo Adventure, I decided to dub it as Chapter 30.5. This was released on July 29th, 2001, which is actually not until the, between uh, Chapters 34 and 35. The word count, count is 11,921 words, and the date is July 13th, and this is during ninth grade. On to the summary.
Sean was sick on his birthday from standing outside in the rain after he received a call from his least favorite uncle, Wutai. He criticized Sharon for neglecting his clan duties as chosen one and of following in his father's footsteps, which made Sharon angry enough to hang up on him. When Sakura found him outside in a fevered state, he told her that the stars were gone and thought that he could he and though he couldn't find Vega of Lyra, at least she was there with she was there with him. When Sakura was standing to Sharon, he heard her when he made her think that she he didn't remember the honey milk she made for him in the past. Later on, Sharon told Sakura about his worst birthday, going through the ordeal and becoming chosen one, and his best, fifth birthday when his cousin gave him a puppy. Sharon said that he named the puppy Vega and he called it Eagle. Sakura and Sharon, Sakura told Sharon the story behind the star Vega where the princess and the shepherd fell in love with each other, but her father separated them. As their love never faltered, the father allowed them to meet once a year. This, this is when the two stars crossed. Kaitu and his pet parrot came through the window to deliver Malin's birthday present, a dating manual for the hopeless guy. Tomoyo followed Kaitu to give Sharon her gift, a tape of Sakura's best moments, and Ariel's presence, Shakespeare's love sonnets. Kaitu gave Sakura a telescope and another present from Malin, a carving of Vega that he made for her when they were children. She also sent a letter stating that she moved on and thanked him for making her stronger. Sakura gave Sharon a mirror, and as he stood behind her in front of it, he told her he wanted what was in it. She refused to believe that it was herself when she mentioned it, and Sharon didn't have to tell have it in him to tell her that she was right. Seeing the sky in the mirror, she decided to take him out. She brought him to Stargazer Hill so that they could see Vega, but it was cloudy. Sharon told her how Eagle had died protecting him, and ever since then he didn't like animals. The clouds then parted to reveal the stars, including Vega. Sakura used the return for them to learn why Vega and Riorin's favorite, why Vega was Riorin's favorite star, and saw that it was Nadeshiko's favorite first, and she wished that they would part as friends. Sakura wished on the shooting star that she and Sharon would always be friends, and when she got angry with him for not telling her his wish, he laughed and realized that he was showing her his true self. He hugged her and thanked her for giving him his most cherished birthday. It was the most precious birthday since he spent it with his most precious Sakura. The next day, Sakura was sick. Sharon tended to her by giving her honey milk, just like she gave him, and said that he remembered every moment he shared with her. Okay, on to the chapter discussion. So first of all, kudos to you for recording this chapter. Not only is the Sharon voice on the difficult side, but you had to play him sick, which must have been really hard and threw you a curveball. Oh my gosh. So just in case I haven't mentioned it before on the podcast, so I have purposely have made Sharon's voice be the deepest. I really wanted him to have just this really deep voice. And so it is kind of hard for me to do his voice for a long period of time let alone this whole chapter is from his point of view and he's sick so not only did I have to do my deep shout on voice but I also had to make it raspy and even you know when you're sick your voice even gets a little bit deeper when you're sick yes. and oh my god by the time this chapter I'm not a tea drinker but but by the time this chapter was over I was like man I feel like I need like a hot tea or like a hot lemon and water like my throat was done for <laughs> should have went for that honey milk <laughs> that's true <laughs> So I've been sick on my birthday and it's no fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we get a flashback and we have the displeasure of meeting Wutai. Ugh. Yeah, and he's so rude to say that Nadeshiko had no links to the Five Force Magicians when she's like literally an Amamiya. It's mm -hmm. like, what, what is he, in denial or something like that? Mm -hmm. He should know his history as well as anybody else. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, just a coincidence. No, 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 you know exactly who she is. Mm -hmm. 
to bring up another Harry Potter reference, but he kind of reminds me of, like, a pure blood wizard. Mm -hmm. Like, he only likes pure bloods, only roots for pure bloods, and that's what he kind of reminds me of, that he's, like, a Malfoy, like, a Lucius type of personality. Yeah, for sure. So, I love seeing Sharon defend Urin, and I feel that now that, like, he's seen the flashbacks, Sharon knows that his father, like, knows his father better than ever. Yes, agreed. Uh, so it's no wonder that Sharon goes totally emo kid and stands in the rain. <laughs> it was a very 2000s emo, let the rain pour down and wash away. <laughs> <laughs> For that Avril Lavigne song, standing in the rain, yes. it's all going dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously, so, so 2000s kid emo, he's the epitome of that. <laughs> I also like how we have another green umbrella mention. Yes, for sure. Yes. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's crazy how much it's gotten mentioned or brought up and stuff, and yeah, so mm -hmm. funny. <laughs> yeah, so Sakura is the one who finds him. <laughs> so Sharon talks about Vega, and this begins the backstory of the name that he gave his dog. How did you come up with the names for your pets? Um, so... When Pete and I first got together back in 2007, in 2009 we got our first dog together and it was a little pug named Annie. And she actually came pre-named as Annie. Like by the time we got her, she was kind of like Scruffle. She was like a year and a half, so that was her name. That's what she knew it by. But we decided to kind of add on the bell part, so we called her Annie Bell. So since she was an A, we have just kind of stuck with just deciding that's just going to be our tradition that every time we get a dog, we're going to go with an A name. And so when Alex came along, since he was a great Pyrenees, I thought it was funny for him to be Alexander the Great yes. Pyrenees. So yes. that was his name. And then um, Archie, I always just thought, I'm a really big fan of Secret Garden, mm. and the uncle on there is, is Archibald Craven. And I just always thought it was just such like a distinguished name, and I just thought it would be so cute to give a dog the name Archie. And then not even a couple years later the royal baby was named Archie which I thought was hilarious but um Pete has like a kind of a rule that we can't give pets names that are like not real actual names like we would never name like a dog like Scruffles Fluffy, <laughs> Scruffy. <laughs> so yeah no offense <laughs> so that's why our dogs have human real names well Paul's name is Paul because uh, my ex at the time, he was writing a muse a, an opera for the city of Montreal about the founding. And the founder of Montreal is uh, Paul Chimidi de Maisonneuve. So we called him Paul. At first I thought it was a joke. It's like, oh, let's just call him Maisonneuve. But then my ex was like, actually, Paul would be a good name for, well, you know, a good name. And what's funny is that there's uh, this running, there's this joke on Family Guy where like someone's walking around with a bag of kittens and then they all go away and it's like, he's like, okay, come on buttons, come on this, come on that, come on Paul. It's like, ha, ah, Paul, <laughs> what a stupid name for a cat. Uh, who <laughs> names their cat Paul? <laughs> so of course my brothers are going to send me that clip as soon as I tell them about my cat named Paul. <laughs> and uh, Nibbles, and it's like, as soon as you meet him, he starts to like nibble on your socks and he'll like nibble on your cheek if you're holding him. He's and a very affectionate <laughs> He's so sweet. And he loves food. He loves food so much. It's his favorite thing. <laughs> it's like there could already be food in his food dish, and just, if we're just topping it up, it's like he makes a beeline, and it's his head is like, it, it's, it's, it's just chomp, 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 chomp. <laughs> and Cameron said that, like, in retrospect, he, he should have called them chompers. <laughs> <laughs> And for Scruffles, well, when we got him, his original name was Ivan, but um, but we didn't we didn't like the name, so we were trying to think about it. And he was a very scruffy dog. But we'll we'll put pictures up of our pets. He's, uh, <laughs> for those of you that know dogs, he's a wired haired. If that helps any of you understand, but yeah, he's like a wired haired German pointer. He's so cute. He's very <laughs> scruffy. <laughs> so like, of course, Scruffy would be the, the the obvious name, but I just thought it was so cliche, and I was trying to stray away from that. And I can't remember if it was Cameron or if it was me, but instead of saying Scruffy, we said Scruffles, and I'm like, oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's his name. His name is Scruffles now. Yes. But 
even even Cameron has like reverted back to Scruffy, and sometimes he'll call him Snuffles if he's like <laughs> sneezing a bit. <laughs> I've decided to call him Wigglebutt because he, when he gets so he's one of those dogs that when he gets so excited, his whole body wiggles, and it's just the cutest thing. So. I've, I've took the call on him Wigglebutt, or Wigglebutt Man. <laughs> yeah, so, so that, and that's how Scruffles got his name. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, now, while tending to Sharon, Sakura says, I was going to have a big party and invite everyone for you. Now, I think this really shows her age. Because, like, yeah, her intentions are good, but is, that is not a Lee Sharon party. <laughs> True. A lot, I think she was doing it, out of, of course, out of the goodness of her heart. Well, of course. Because of what he did for her. But, uh, but yeah, like, he's he's very much the lone wolf that he is named after. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's this great episode of Parks and Rec where Ron is terrified that Leslie's going to throw him this big <laughs> party like she did for Anne. But in the end of the episode, all she does is give him, like, steak while he's watching one of his favorite movies. And then she just explains, yeah, because I threw Anne an Anne party, and this is a Ron party. Uh. So, so what she needs to do is, like, you know, for, to pull from real life, when it was Cameron's birthday, I roasted a whole chicken, and I made banana bread with chocolate chips, <laughs> and, and then, like, you know, that's, uh, that's all he needed. What's a Pete birthday? Um, a Pete birthday is probably just hanging out at home, playing, like, three board games, usually probably his favorite food in the entire world is fried chicken so we'd probably have fried chicken and just hanging out at home whereas my birthday was an extravaganza hotel stay in quebec city and dragging priya all over the city to look at goblin sites which is like a korean drama highly mm -hmm. recommend if none of you have seen it <laughs> uh. are you aware of the mini comic where sakura visits sharon when he's sick i'm sure i've seen it but it's probably been years. Okay, well, I ha it's at the end of one of Clam's art books, and I do have a copy of it, so okay. I'll show you afterwards. Yes, I would love to see it. Mm -hmm. So we get some self-reflection of Sharon being mean to Sakura, and now he's, like, instantly regretting it. Mm -mm -mm. But it's not all doom and gloom in this chapter. We get an adorable flashback of Sharon and Maylin as five-year-olds, which is <laughs> always fun. <laughs> and we get a lovely conversation between Yilan and Leyan about Riren. Yes. It's nice to have, like, different characters give a POV about Riren, because it's like, yeah, we see him in the flashbacks and stuff like that, but for other people to give him, like, character, like, just to talk about his character it's a bit refreshing yeah well and it was nice too because you know as most characters he's painted as the gallant hero and it was nice to get kind of like a real world point of view from him from galen like you know she was very much like she i think galen knows that she wasn't his first love she knows all this stuff about him so it was kind of refreshing for wish chan not to have galen just gush and be like oh yes he was the perfect man I loved him so much. We had this perfect relationship. Like, I really appreciate that, that Ye she had Ye Lin just say, no, he wasn't perfect. We didn't have the perfect marriage, but you know what? We loved each other the best way we could. Like, I thought that was super refreshing. Yeah. So we meet, we meet Vega. Did you ever expect to be panting like a puppy in a movie book? <laughs> <laughs> I well, you know, I knew Wolfie Chan was coming at some point. So in my head, I was like, well, Wolfie Chan's probably my first dog that I'm really gonna have to act. But I completely forgot Vega is gonna. Cause okay, spoiler alert. I always, I think I've only have read this special once and only once. And I don't even think I read the whole way through because I am so sensitive when it comes to dogs, especially dog deaths mm. and even like movies if i i have to, you know there's that website does the dog, dog die, die. <laughs> i really i'm like i'm 100 percent. i have to google that because if a dog dies during the movie i refuse to watch the movie so i think i've only maybe read the beginning part of this chapter i'm pretty sure i skimmed through all of the vegas stuff because i was just didn't want to know and yeah <laughs> shara asks sakura about her favorite star now, do you know anything about astronomy, astronomy because I'm clueless? <laughs> yes, I know a lot about astronomy, actually. Priya took me to this really cool ski lift thing at night, and um, which we'll have to tell you guys about that. That was so funny. Basically, while we were waiting in line for this ski lift thing, I kept like, since we were up 
on a literal mountain. I was up, I was kind of pointing her out some of the constellations and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm no astronomer, but I know a fair bit to be able to pick out things in the sky and things like that. So, Sean believed that his dad became a star, and that told, that gave me total Lion King vibes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Again, 90s kids. <laughs> 90s kids. <laughs> we get the story about the princess and the shepherd. I like how we get stories within stories. Mm -hmm. And I think the last time we saw this was when uh, the Mirror of Truth was being introduced. Mm, true. Which, um, which, by the way, I apologize if I mispronounced this constellation. I was going to look it up and then I was like halfway through recording the chapter and then that's when it hit me. I was like, oh, I should probably have googled how this is supposed to be pronounced. So anyways, I said Vega of Lier and I know um, I know the name Lyra is based off of this constellation. I know Lyra, so I don't know if it's supposed to be Vega Lyre. I don't know, but anyways, that's what you guys got. <laughs> So we get a visit by Parochan and Kaiti Magician. Now, we haven't been introduced to Parochan in chronological order yet, but um, clearly, like, if you think about timeline and stuff like that, this has to be before Kaitu was shot, because he can't just be, like, ducking in, ducking out, and stuff like that, because mm -hmm. once he's shot, we kind of follow him, like, afterwards. So this just goes, like, this is further... To, this is why I really think that this takes place before the Tokyo trip. Yeah, in my head, this is probably like he followed Maylin to Hong Kong. They've obviously gotten a little bit closer at this point for him to be doing this errand for her, which yes. I would like to bring up later as well. And so, yeah, to me, it kind of takes place sort of a little bit after he asked her about the sword and in between when he gets shot. So I think it's kind of somewhere in between there. Yeah, yeah. So dating so yeah you're right because he's the one who's delivering Maylin's gift so mm -hmm. clearly it's proof that the two of them have met up yes so now dating manual for the hopeless guy makes its debut as Maylin's gift and uh, I I don't think I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure that this book kind of makes a call back like as the series continues oh yeah I think we see this again if not once like at least twice more it'll come back so Tomoyo also pops up <laughs> and gives Sharon a DVD of Sakura's best moments. Not Stalker vibes at all, but yes. these DVD presents are definitely a thing in New Child, which is hilarious. <laughs> and I'm sure you noticed that Tomoyo was the one who delivered Ariel's gift. I sure did! You know, I think it's pretty cute that, you know, Kai is delivering Mei Lin's gift. They've obviously have gotten closer. Now Tameo's delivering Eudel's gift, showing that they've been talking on the down low. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Like Ariel could have definitely have given um, just just sent his his book of sonnets through the mail like anybody else. But no, no, he he left it in Tamoyo's care. Love it. Mm -hmm. And finally, there's a bonus present of Malin giving Sharon a wood carving that he made when he was very young, which is so cute. Mm -hmm. um, did you notice that, like, Kaitu slips that he was a smart guy who was a straight-A student and class president? Yes. Yes, I did notice that. Yeah, that was the glimmer of Mikay. So, Malin writes Sharon a heartfelt note, and once again, we're reminded that nobody knows him better than her. Yes, and I think... Basically, honestly, the big takeaway from that letter is that she has moved on, yes. you know, which, and the, with how close her and Kai have gotten in such a short time, mm -hmm. makes me think that she kind of started to realize she was having, well, maybe not yet, no, but, but she at least could recognize she was probably attracted to someone else that wasn't shot on for once. Yes. So, your parrot voice was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you must have loved singing Kiss the Girl. <laughs> Even if it did broke up our tender moment between uh, S and S. Anytime I get a chance to do a Disney song and let alone in a parrot voice, I was living for it. <laughs> but you know your French in parrot ease was actually really good. <laughs> because like, see me bite, see me bite. <laughs> and, and you still said the E the right way. Hey, look at that. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Sean gets tongue-tied when Sakura got the right answer about the whole mirror. I think it's the, the whole mirror thing. And um, it totally took me back to the story I told on the podcast about me telling my middle school crush the I lie instead of I like you. It's like we were we were almost there. We were almost there. So finally they got on the hill. So when they got on the hill, I half expected you to say. She didn't mention that it was a famous spot for couples to watch stars and make out together <laughs> instead of makes wishes together. Oh, did I say that? No, you said makes wishes together, but as soon as I heard hill and couples and make, my head literally went to make out, but no, you definitely said make wishes together. Is that how it is in the story? It is in okay. the story. Okay, I was yeah. like... <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I guess it's because I'm listening to like a Sweet Valley High podcast, and in that world there is a hill where couples go to make outs but uh in our sweet sweet innocent new trials world the couples who go up the hill they, they just look at the stars and make wishes together or the head canon is that actually is the make out hill but toya didn't want his precious baby sister to know that so he just told her like oh you go and make wishes up there as a couple <laughs> <laughs> and knowing our sakura she was totally buying it okay <laughs> See, now that's what I call a shower on birthday, even if the weather was clear, because like even when they're up there, it was cloudy, but, but that's what I call a shower on birthday. Yes. <laughs> so then we get a very interesting story from Sharon on how Vega is not your average puppy. And I was really excited to get to this part because I love how the great five, they all have patron animals. And uh, just as a reminder, it was Hayashi who has the wolf. Mm. Now in this chapter, the story says that the wolf is Shu Lin's pet. Now, I don't know if this is Wish Chan's error since the Lee patron animal is actually a dragon, but maybe we can headcanon this and said that Hayashi loaned the wolf to Shu Lin to comfort her since the two of them couldn't be together. Yes, or kind of like how sometimes if you break up with someone, your pet still loves, you know, that person you were with, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and then we get to the demise of Ego, which is heartbreaking, and I think we can clear... Th yeah, let's yeah, just, let's yeah, just we, fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really impressed with myself. I got through it in the audiobook, because, yeah. <laughs> I'm very impressed with myself. So I honestly think Sakura could have used her car to clear the skies, but uh, Mother Nature was on, her, on their side last night, and they were able to see the constellation. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of cards, I didn't know she used any, but she used the return to find out why Vega was Ruren's favorite star. Now, I love how Nadeshiko and Ruren scenes are Wish Chan's like hall pass to write romantic scenes. <laughs> hall pass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I gotta keep it very serious between Sharon and Sakura. They can confess because the story is, is, is like based on that. But if Ruren wants to give uh, Nadeshiko a kiss, I can totally write mm -hmm. that in. Mm -hmm. And of course, Vega is Riren's favorite star because it was Nadeshiko's favorite star first. Uh, and his wish of them making up before they passed away was like, it's, it's nice because it came, it came true at the end. So, uh, Sharon laughing over a pouting Sakura is my favorite thing ever, and hearing the audio makes the scene so much better. <laughs> and we even get another SNS hug, which I forgot. Yeah, I 100% forgot as well. Yeah. So this is, this is like some the fun part about revisiting new trials. It's like, oh, I completely forgot about that hug. <laughs> the chapter ends with Sakura catching a cold and Sharon tending to her with a warm glass of honey milk and the confirmation that he does remember everything after all. I'm glad that it's like his step of going into honesty, you know, like, yes, I think that's, you know, even though this is such a small scene, I really do think it's a big scene in ways, because it's kind of him kind of making a step in the right direction, basically. Yes. no, for sure. Like, this is the chapter where we learn that he has, like, these family duties, and that's what's stopping him from being close to Sakura. Like, the whole reason he's in Japan is just for the dark forces and not to be close to her. Mm-hmm. But um, this is pretty much a turning point where he realizes, that, you know what, it's like, let me live my own life. Yes. And, and he's starting to make an effort. Yes. 
the Dark Forces Corner, the uh, the one card that we see is the Return. Uh, fan Art Spotlights. So 10 years after Wish Chan wrote this chapter, she released her first Sharon's Birthday Omaki, which will soon become a tradition. So basically we have Sakura saying, oh, like, like Sharon Khan, what do you want for your birthday? And then in the fine print, Sharon's like, what? Should what? I hear my Sharon voice? Oh, if you want. <laughs> what? Why is Sakura asking me this? I can't tell her. Can I? Does she really not know what I wish for on my birthday? Will she think I'm weird if I tell her the truth? But I can't tell her the truth. It's too embarrassing. Uh, uh, um, well, um, go home and look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> that was a delight. And then Sakura's like, Hoey, I don't get it. Sharon wants a mirror for his birthday. Why would anyone want a mirror? Oh, she looks so pretty. I don't think I'll ever really understand him. Well, I guess he is a little strange and vain. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last scene is Sharon, and he's like, Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> when will, will she ever understand my heart? So and then good. a little crying Sharon is a tag. <laughs> I love the little Sakura balloon, too. That's yeah. so cute. It even, has a, it even has a caption. It's like, Sakura head balloon, courtesy of Dai Doji Toy Company. <laughs> so, of course, they're going to turn her head into a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> and Priya pointed it out to me, and I've never noticed it before, but the mirror Sharon has the uh, Subasa eyes, right? Mm. So in Subasa Reservoir Chronicle, Clone Sharon has different eyes through Clone Sharon in this banner. So that's like a little Easter egg. Love it. On to the author's note. All right, guys, buckle up. We're going to be here for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so we got. Oh, let me read her original. Let me read her original one first. So we got Wish Chan. Hee hee, sorry Sharon's special took so long. Hey, I'm not as late as last year when I was half a year later. Actually, this took a lot longer to write than I thought it would. Let's see. The legend about Vega of Lier, also called Vega of Lyra, is true. It has many versions of it in many cultures, including Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. Hope the Vega theme wasn't too redundant, but I do like stars, and I do think the whole Vega legend is so beautiful. You may think that Ryurin and Nadesco scene was random, but actually it's one of my favorite scenes. Besides, it explains why Shadon's favorite star grew to be Vega by explaining how Ryurin grew up to like that star. I refer back to many different scenes. Let's see, the honey milk theme is from the Clamp CCS illustration book 2, a side story. The Yukata scene is from the CCS Manga Volume 10, and so on. I mentioned the mirror thingy again. Refer back to Sharon's B Day story. Hee hee. I think she. Oh, sorry. Sakura's B Day story. Hee hee. Yeah, Sakura still doesn't get it. Poor Sharon. Oh, yeah. Him being dismayed by Evil's present is referring back to my short story, Beauty and the Wolf. If you read it, it'll make sense. Oh, and also the story matches the title of my webpage, Wish for a Star. Yes. The title does have a significance. So that's her original one. I love that she is our clamp um, expert, expert and dropping all her like um, Easter eggs and hens, citing all her sources. Because <laughs> yeah. like we didn't talk about it, but it's true. There is a mention where Sharon tells Sakura, "It's like, oh, you should make me a Doritaka. And and Sakura is like, "Uh, you're much bigger now, so that's gonna take me forever." Hard pass. Did you ever read Beauty and the Wolf? A uh, long time ago, yes. I don't know if, if I've read it. It's been years. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably read it's it's a very 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 long time ago like probably 20 years ago mm. so then we have another one which is wish chan july 13th 2011 this is when she posted her fan art oh, okay okay i guess this is the 10 year anniversary of this chapter if i remember correctly this chapter was originally written circa 2001 wow that feels so long ago well, considering I was just a high schooler when I wrote this chapter, I wonder if all the typos were excusable. I've been editing some of the older chapters recently, and this chapter had more typos than any other ones, including the earliest ones from when I was just 13. There were also some formatting errors and lots of weird symbols appearing everywhere. <laughs> I don't spend a lot of time on one-shot specials because, well, they are one-shot. But I'm glad I finally came back to clean up things. I did minimalist editing. 
I did minimalist editing because I I like keeping things the way they are for nostalgia's sake and for the sake of comparing my writing then and now. I'm surprised at how much foreshadowing I did even back then in a special chapter and rather proud of myself for staying faithful to my original vision, if nothing else. The latest updates to new trials, blah, blah, blah. What foreshadow? Did we Maybe, miss a foreshadow? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's, because we haven't, we're not there yet, right? Because this is 10 years in the future. Because uh -huh. right now we're in 2001. And one, uh -huh. and she's talking about stuff for 2011. So maybe, I, if anything, she's probably talking about how like Wolfie Chan is going to enter the picture because Wolfie Chan's name is also Eagle. Right. So, so I think like she's probably, she's probably foreshadowing um, the. If I'm going to guess, mm -hmm. she's probably foreshadowing the fact that they have uh, mm -hmm. Wolfie Chan. Well, maybe you know Maylin and Kai's relationship. Yeah. Maybe, like, Eros was champ. <laughs> And we could maybe even go a step further and say Soccer and Shadon are like Vega Lier. Yeah, Star you Cross know, lovers. Star Cross, they get divided by an ocean and Yeah. You know? And like Leon, he he pops up in this chapter yes. and he does become a character later on. I can't tell you what year it is that, that, that he becomes like a character like a character, but maybe maybe it's like um like her her characterization of Lee Yun mm. is like kind of foreshadows. It's hard to say because we are two thousand and one and this is Wish Chen from like ten years in the future. So yeah. I think we'll just put a pin on it and once we get to circa two thousand and eleven we're gonna have a better idea of what she yeah. means about foreshadowing. But by all means if any of you picked up something we did not please comment, please let us know. Please Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. Because like, or it could just be like um, Sharon realizing that like he doesn't have to be so tied to the clan and he can he can be his own person, which is something that like we definitely do see yes. uh, later on in the future of New Trials. Yes, and I think all the symbols and stuff is. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever posted on fan fiction, but sometimes when mm. you post on fan fiction in different formats over here, sometimes fan fiction will put all these extra symbols and stuff in there. So, Miss Chan, that was 100% not your fault. That was just fan fiction. Fan fiction not that. Alright, so I think that covers it. You have been listening to New Travel Podcast, where it must rain for there to be a rainbow. You've been listening to New Travel Podcast. Please be sure to check out the audiobook version of this fan fiction, where you can hear my favorite Chan voice. <laughs> Also, please be sure to check out the Facebook 